When it comes to solar, which approach is better, a string inverter or microinverters? Debate has raged for years on this, so I think it's time we found out. I'm going to put one of the best string inverters, the Tesla Powerwall 3, into the ring with one of the best microinverter solutions, Enphase IQ8 5P Combo. Let's see who wins. Hi there, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. When you're planning a solar and battery installation, you'll quickly realise there are some important technology choices to make. And one of the biggest decisions is whether to go for a string inverter or a microinverter approach. Each approach has its own pros and cons, and your specific situation might dictate that decision for you. But if you do have a choice, the question remains, which is the best solution? There are plenty of string inverters available in the market today, and many would say that the Tesla Powerwall 3 is the gold standard, not least because it has an inverter and a battery in one unit. And on the microinverter side, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one name in the game, and that's Enphase, with their latest IQ8 microinverter and 5P battery combination. If you're not familiar with these products, I've made videos on both here, and I'll put links in the description. So, which of these two heavyweights will take the crown? Before the fight begins then, it's only right that we stick to tradition and start with a face-off. The Powerwall 3 is a single unit containing both an inverter and battery. The inverter can support up to six strings and a total array size of 20 kilowatts peak. And the battery has a capacity of 13.5 kilowatt hours. Now, many people will want to have home backup capability, or EPS as it's known, and for that you'll also need a Tesla gateway. In many parts of the US though, you can use a Tesla backup switch instead, which attaches directly to your meter socket. And that's it really. Let's now look at the Enphase solution. This is the IQ8 microinverter itself, and you'll need one of these for every panel that you have. Then, you'll need an IQ gateway, which all the microinverters communicate with. If your installation is large though, you'll instead need an IQ Combiner 4, which includes the IQ gateway function inside of it. And for the battery, Enphase provides the IQ5P. Now this battery only has a capacity of 5 kilowatt hours, so to even up the scales, we'll need three of them, and that'll give us 15 kilowatt hours, slightly more than the Powerwall's 3.5 kilowatt hours, but that's okay. And finally, for the home backup, we'll also need an IQ system controller, which will handle all of that for us. So there you have it then, we're now ready for the fight. Let's head over to the arena. Round one. Round one is all about roof complexity. Both solutions will work perfectly well for properties with solar panels installed on just one or two roof facets. But what happens when the roof design gets more complicated? Take this property for example. It has six roof facets, each a potential candidate for solar panel installation. How will our two contenders handle such complexity? Starting with Tesla, while most string inverters come with just two MPPTs, maximum PowerPoint trackers, thereby supporting two strings of panels, the US version of the Powerwall 3 comes with an impressive six MPPTs. Now this is crucial because solar panels on different roof orientations produce varying amounts of energy throughout the day. And without proper protection, wiring these panels together can reduce their overall efficiency. The six MPPTs in the Powerwall 3 though allow support for up to six different roof orientations, ensuring that the panels on each orientation will provide optimal output. And that should be sufficient for most properties with complex roofs. There is a restriction though, for some regions in the world, including the UK and Australia, the Powerwall 3 is only marketed with three MPPTs. Now, this might have been done to save bill of material costs in regions where the properties generally only have one, two or three roof facets at most. Now, over to Enphase. One of the standout advantages of microinverter technology is that the DC output of each solar panel is converted to AC on the roof by the microinverter attached to it. This means that the roof orientation and pitch variations across a property are absolutely no issue at all. Since the output is already AC, all the panels can be seamlessly connected together and they'll operate independently at their optimum levels without any of the issues that come with combining DC outputs. 
So this round I think goes to end phase, 10 points to 9. Round 2 This round is all about shading and of course Enfei should win this round easily because it's one of the marketed benefits of microinverters. But let's see what happens. We'll start with Enphase. There's a common myth that in a string of panels, if one of those panels is shaded, it will drag down the output of all the other panels in the string. And microinverters are often highlighted as a solution to that issue ensuring that shading on one panel doesn't affect the performance of the others. However, this myth only holds true in specific cases of shading, such as diffuse shading, like from nearby trees, and even then only if the shading is minimal. Or shading caused by smaller items like a TV antenna or a cable. For most other types of shading, such as hard shading from chimneys, dormer roofs or neighbouring buildings, Solar panels are already equipped to handle the problem using built-in bypass diodes. These diodes are pretty cool. They allow electricity to flow around any shaded sections of a solar panel, preventing it from reducing the output of the rest of the system. It's a fascinating topic, but it's a bit too much to cover in detail here. So if you are interested, I've explored the topic in depth in this dedicated series of videos, and you'll find a link to that playlist in the description. On to Tesla then. The Powerwall 3 comes equipped with a sufficient number of MPPTs to handle shading effectively. If part of your roof is shaded at certain times of the day, you can easily place the affected panels on their own string so that they won't impact the production of other panels. And there's also a strong case to be made for keeping the technology on your roof to an absolute minimum. It's a really hard place to reach if you have any equipment failures. So with the Powerwall 3, nearly all types of shading are already managed by a combination of the panel technology with the bypass diodes and the Powerwall's advanced MPPT system. So for this round, I'm calling it a draw. 10 points to each contender. Round 3 In this round, we'll be looking at solar production. Let's start with Enphase. It's important to note that microinverters are typically rated lower than the maximum output of the solar panels they're connected to. This means that when a panel generates more power than the microinverter's rating, the excess energy is clipped and cannot be used. In most cases, this isn't a major issue, as panels typically reach their maximum output only during the sunniest days of the summer. The rest of the year, the panel's output usually stays well within the microinverter's limits. However, as solar panel technology continues to improve, panels are becoming more efficient and capable of higher outputs. At the time of this video, panels with power ratings of 450 watts or more are quite common. By contrast, the most capable Enphase IQ8 microinverter is limited to just 366 watts. That's a significant difference, and it means more clipping will occur, reducing the system's overall efficiency throughout the year. Things are much rosier with the Tesla Powerwall 3 though. It has been designed to support larger solar panel capacities with a maximum DC system size of 20 kilowatts peak. This allows you to accommodate high output solar panels, including those rated 450 watts or more with minimal energy clipping. So to me, that's a clear win to Tesla then. 10 points to eight. Round four. This round is all about the battery. Enphase does offer a slightly higher capacity with its three 5P batteries, but this comes at an additional cost, which we'll discuss later. And of course, you'll need to locate enough space to mount three units instead of one. Looking at power output, both systems are able to deliver an impressive continuous 11.5 kilowatts. However, there's a notable difference in the charge rate. The Powerwall 3 charges at a maximum of five kilowatts, whereas the Enphase 5Ps can achieve nearly 10 kilowatts. The Powerwall 3 edges ahead in efficiency though, due to its DC coupled configuration requiring just one AC-DC conversion. In contrast, the Enphase system is AC coupled and the three AC-DC conversions required leads to a slightly lower efficiency. If you'd like to understand more about the difference between AC and DC coupled batteries, I cover that in this video here. Now both Tesla and Enphase provide expansion possibilities, but whereas additional Enphase 5Ps have to be mounted beside each other, the Tesla Powerwall also allows units to be stacked behind each other like this. Oh, I don't know, I think on this round Tesla has a slight edge, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. 
I'm going to give 10 points to Tesla and 9 points to Enphase. Round five. Now in this round we're looking at the warranty of the battery. The 5P batteries come with a 15 year warranty, but there is a 6000 cycle limit. Now that might sound restrictive, but it means you can fully charge and then discharge your battery once every day, and it would still take you 16 years to breach that limit. That said, in the future, if your battery is part of a virtual power plant or VPP, then it could well cycle twice a day, which means your battery would be out of warranty within eight years. Enphase guarantees that you'll have 60% capacity remaining at the end of that 15 year warranty period. Over to Tesla then. The Tesla Powerwall 3 comes with a 10 year warranty, but with unlimited cycles, so no issues if you end up using your battery quite heavily. To secure that warranty though, it must be reliably connected to the internet to allow remote firmware upgrades from Tesla, and failure to do so might reduce that warranty down to just four years. Tesla guarantees 70% capacity remaining after the end of the 10 years. I think I'd like to add a couple of points then in relation to both solutions. Warranties are rarely worth the paper they're written on, and if you don't believe me, just have a read of one and you'll quickly see why. They're typically filled full of clauses that give manufacturers plenty of opportunities to avoid honouring their commitments. And just because the warranty specifies a number of years, that doesn't mean to say that your battery will only last that long. You'll probably find that you'll get half the time again at least. Okay, on this round I think I'm going to give 10 points to Enphase and 9 points to Tesla, as the Enphase warranty is 50% longer. Okay, we're halfway through the match now, and I'd just like to thank you for all the support that you're giving to the channel. Simply watching this video helps me a lot, and liking and subscribing helps even more. And if you want to help me out financially, there's an easy and inexpensive way by signing up for my Patreon here. And don't forget, if you live in the UK, we can both earn £50 simply by switching to who I believe is the best energy provider in the UK, Octopus Energy. Thank you. All right then, let's get back to the match. Round six. We're now going to look at the warranty of the inverter. For Tesla, it's 10 years, just like the battery, as the warranty is on the complete unit. And should the inverter module fail before then, I'd imagine Tesla would be able to swap out that module rather than changing the whole unit. There is an issue though that if the inverter fails, then all the solar generation is lost until Tesla is able to book you in with one of their engineers, and that might be days or even weeks. Moving on to Enphase then, their IQ8 microinverters generally come with a 25 year warranty, where if a unit fails, a replacement unit will be provided to you free of charge. It's important to note though that for the warranty to remain valid, the microinverters must have had continuous connection to the internet since installation. The good news is that in the unlikely event that a microinverter does fail, it should not affect the rest of the system, so you might only lose 5 or 10% of your solar generation until that failed unit is swapped out. The not so good news is that while the replacement unit is free of charge, there might still be a cost to you for an engineer to get onto your roof and swap out the failed unit, and if scaffolding is required, that could be quite a cost. I strongly recommend then that you check with your installer about what these costs might be before you sign up with them. Enphase has a great product line, but I see these costs as being a real bone of contention for customers, and it's for that reason that Enphase loses this round. 10-9 to Tesla. All right then, we've only got four rounds to go, and it must be pretty close. Round seven. As we were talking about costs, let's get into the costs of buying these solutions in the first place. And I saw a video recently that looked into the costs of both solutions. I'll put a link to it in the description, and Enphase was certainly the more expensive. Now you could make the argument that with Enphase microinverters being warrantied for 25 years, you'd at least need to have to replace your Tesla inverter module once during that same time frame. But is that cost offset by the cost that you would incur if one of your microinverters fails during that time? I don't know, I think it's about even Stevens, which means because of the higher upfront cost with Enphase, Tesla wins this round 10 to 9. Here we're looking at ease of installation, and we'll start with Enphase. I mean sure, there are a lot of microinverters to install, one for each panel, but the process is actually quite straightforward. 
Each microinverter is securely mounted onto the rail underneath the panel with just a few extra connections needed to link them up. The work is not finished though. There's a gateway or a combiner unit to fit and then the comms linked to all the microinverters. Then there are three 5P batteries to fit and finally an IQ system controller if you want EPS. There's no denying it, that's a fair amount of kit to be installed provided you've actually got enough room to accommodate it all. All right then, let's contrast that with Tesla. As you can see, there are just two units, the Powerwall 3 itself and the gateway unit if you want EPS. And remember, in some parts of the US, a backup switch replaces the gateway unit, which reduces the install time even further. I don't know about you, but in my mind, Tesla is the clear winner of this round. 10 points to eight. All right then, two rounds to go. Round nine. In this round, we're looking at the value adds that come with the main product offerings. Let's start with Enphase. The level of data available is pretty impressive, right down to the performance of individual panels. And if you're someone who loves analyzing the numbers, a microinverter solution provides just about everything you could ask for. Over to Tesla then. Being a string inverter, you still get plenty of data, but it's focused on the overall system performance. You don't get any panel level stats, unfortunately. Staying with Tesla then, in many countries you get access to the Tesla Energy virtual power plant, which can provide significant financial returns on your investment. You're not tied to the Tesla VPP either. Instead, you can participate in other VPPs, including one that Octopus Energy is creating in the UK. Over to Enphase then. Now they don't operate their own virtual power plant as far as I can tell, but their IQ 5P battery has support for a number of existing VPPs operating in a number of states across America and beyond. A couple of other value added items then. Enphase allows the connection of a fuel generator for additional backup supply, whereas Tesla doesn't. But with Tesla, you're not just getting an energy solution, you're joining a broader ecosystem. And their app lets you manage your Powerwall alongside other Tesla products like EVs for a seamless experience. Mm, it's a close call, but I actually think Tesla wins this round 10 million. All right then, we are almost done. Final round, round 10. In this final round, we're looking at brand reputation and aesthetics. Tesla is undoubtedly the more recognizable brand of the two. And while opinions on Elon Musk can be polarizing, Tesla's mission and their products enjoy strong support from a very large audience across the world. The Powerwall range is incredibly popular, with Tesla reporting 750,000 installations as of last month. And at this pace, they're set to reach a million installations by early 2025. But that's not to say that Enphase isn't a heavyweight in its own right. To date, they ship nearly 80 million microinverters, a staggering number that speaks to their reliability and market dominance. And for anyone questioning the value of microinverters, I'd simply ask, how can Enphase ship so many if they weren't delivering on performance and quality. Now, when it comes to aesthetics, I'd say both contenders deliver products that look the part. But that said, Enphase does require a number of additional units on the wall to match Tesla's battery capacity. And that could be a consideration for some. Overall then, I'm calling this final round a draw. So that's 10 points to Tesla and 10 points to Enphase. Thanks to both contenders for a fair fight. I think this one will be settled on the scorecards. So let's see them. Hmm, it does look pretty close. Let's see who the winner is. And the winner is Tesla Powerwall 3. Thank you for watching then. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, these scores reflect my own opinions and you might see things slightly differently. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, including anything I might have missed, and I'll add notes in a pinned comment. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon. 